All right, you're just going to have to picture this guy dead because, well, you ain't getting any picture anytime soon. But, 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 you do not have to picture the country in which he died in a whole heap of trouble because I've got the proof, and I'm going to show you now. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto, and sorry, no photo of a dead bin Laden, but will you settle for a gravely wounded Pakistani stock market? Because I am telling you, for Pakistani investors staring at a big, big drubbing there today, the worst in 10 weeks, that's a lot more frightening. Because the fallout from this bin Laden killing is proving really frightening. Seems they are so worried about losing aid from here that they're just selling anything that ain't nailed down there. And for very good reason. Fears the $18.5 billion Washington to Pakistan spending spigot is closing. As more in Washington feel hoodwinked by a country they say had to have known of the monster in its midst for years. Well, Texas Congressman Ron Paul doesn't much care. He says, stop this ridiculous foreign aid now. He joins me right now. Congressman, um, they're worried over there. Should they be? I, I guess they should be, but... Uh you know, I'm against foreign aid altogether for everybody, so it's not very difficult for me to support it. You know, the one provision I saw was, uh, well, explain to us whether or not you knew he was there and, you know, defend yourself. If you don't, we're going to take away your foreign aid. You know, that sort of suggests to me that we bully people, that we say, if you do exactly as we tell you, we give you your money. So I like to take the more principled approach and say, we shouldn't steal money from the American taxpayer and give it to dictators around the world, which we do, you know, whether it's uh, Turkey or wherever, uh, uh, Egypt, and many of these places. So I would say that, uh, uh, yes, we should de take, take away their foreign aid. But, you know, if I had to predict... I'm not sure they're going to do that. There's a lot of talk about that, but there'll be a lot of arguments to uh, keep it because it'll disturb our relations. Oh, with, no, no, uh, you're Pakistan. right about that. We're already hearing it today, Congressman, this talk that uh, China might step into this vacuum. And if, yeah. if we turn our back on them, China will be more than happy to lend them wine right. or whatever. Um, what do you think of the fact that Pakistan might even be playing that Beijing card? <laughs> well, it's possible, you know. Uh, They've been known to be pretty good traders. So, no, that's always a possibility. I mean, they act in their own self-interest. You know, everybody does. Countries do. Individuals do. And if they think it's in their self-interest uh, to play one against the other, besides, uh, you know, China has more money in the bank than we do. No, they they have actually have trillion. money. Actually, you're right. They have money. You're right about that. They have three, tr three trillion dollars and uh, a trillion of ours. So maybe they think it's they, a good time well, to they do have, dollars, yeah, They so. have a lot to spread around. But I do want to get back to your original point. And, and it was a good one because you've raised it before, post-Tunisia and Egypt and all these uprisings. What we get for all of this money and supposed influence, very little. But in the case of uh, what's happening in Pakistan, Congressman, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, it was faulted to begin with. If, if you're saying you're paying all this money because we are united in finding, let's say, Osama bin Laden, what is possibly within their interest to find the guy? Because then the gravy train would stop once they do, right? Yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, somebody said we always have to have an enemy out there. But, you know, uh, it, it doesn't look like he was very well protected either. I mean, four people in a hole in the wall and uh, you know they went in and it wasn't much of a firefight. I, it reminded me actually of capturing uh, uh, you, you know uh, uh, the Iraqi uh, uh, Saddam Hussein dictator. Saddam, right. in a, in a capturing Saddam. Right. He, he was in a hole That's and right. this was a hole in the wall that they captured him and uh, you know a few people. It was rather amazing conclusion to all of this. Yeah, uh, at least this guy was above ground before he was underwater. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I'm wondering, though, about the bigger picture of foreign aid. You're right, Congress. We always do make a big stink about, oh, we're never going to do this again. We're never going to do this again. And I think what happens is we get very concerned. I mentioned the China card before. And we say, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want that to happen. We don't that. And then we open the wallet all over again. And we never learn. So the, 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 the momentary freeze or even pause, and it's more psychological than anything else, it never results in less foreign aid, only more. No, it, it, will, it will end, though. Uh, it will end when we no longer have dollars that people trust and we can't pass them out. Uh, and, and I think we're approaching that uh, pretty soon. But that also is a challenge to our military presence around the world. So, uh, I, I argue that foreign aid is taking money from uh, poor people in a rich country and giving it to rich people 
uh, in a poorer country because I don't think it really helps the people over there. I mean, and I think uh, that uh, uh, in, in, uh, in so many instances, the dictator ends up, ends up with the m money. Certainly in Egypt, the people didn't get help, and there were billions of dollars sent over there. But, you know, rich people here, Wall Street doesn't suffer when we pass out foreign aid. Matter of fact, a lot of them like it because they figure they're going to be forced to spend some of that money back on some company that sells stuff to these dictators. But the little people suffer because they suffer the consequence of inflation and uh, weak economy. So, uh, you know, you're I, right. I really it's think a very foreign... incestuous relationship, that is for sure. It's Congressman, down. it's always great having you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. By the way, Ron Paul will be among the five potential GOP presidential candidates taking part in the first Republican presidential debate tomorrow. That's going to be hosted by Fox.